Making the invisible visible, that's process mapping. Our processes are typically invisible to us. It's just what we do. In manufacturing, processes are bolted to the floor and much more visible. You can actually see raw materials being transformed into a finished product. But often, in an office environment, we never know the whole flow and never take a step back to look at the process as a whole and really analyze it to make it better. So why should we process map? It allows us to look at a process, understand it, and identify inefficiencies and waste so that we can begin to take steps to improve the process. Mapping all of the steps of a process and identifying the job function that completes each step allows us to identify areas for improvement. Process mapping is bold and visual helping to make the process visible. Often, process mapping begins with a SIPOC diagram which illustrates the macro level big picture and has identified the suppliers, inputs, outputs, and customers of the process and, importantly, the scope of the process. The people who work in the process should be the people who are doing the process mapping. Process mapping is a visual exercise and requires ample space to organize each piece of the process. Start with a large piece of paper placed on a large wall. Next, you'll want to determine the functional areas, those that do something in the process. Identify a horizontal band or swim lane for each functional area involved in the process. Alternatively, you can start with the first functional area and begin mapping the process, adding other functional areas in their own swim lane as you arrive at those steps. Start with the first step and ask, what comes next? Write each step in a verb-noun format. Have participants write the steps on post-it notes. Place each note on the process map in order and in correct swim lane. Move the notes around until the group is satisfied that all steps have been identified and that each step is in the correct order. Using color-coded post-it notes helps to make the process visible. For example, beginning and ending points of the process use green post-it notes. Pink post-it notes are used to identify functional areas. Any task activity where work is performed, use yellow post-it notes. Use blue post-it notes turned into a diamond shape to indicate a decision point which will lead to a separate path or set of steps. Use purple post-it notes any time there is a wait or delay before the next step or decision. Next, you will connect the steps in one swim lane with single straight arrows. Single straight arrows are used between tasks performed by the same person, work unit, or function. Handoffs between functions are shown with box arrows and electronic handoffs are shown with jagged arrows. Once the process map is drawn, it's time to analyze it for potential areas of process improvement. Begin by identifying value-added activities, those that transform materials and information into products or services that the customer wants. Identify non-value-added activities, those that use resources but do not directly contribute to the product or service. Identify non-value-added activities but necessary steps, those that are non-value-added but mandated by regulation, rules, or statute and cannot be changed unless the regulation is changed. Identify waste, rework, handoffs, and things that could be eliminated from the process to make it simpler and of more value to the customer. The Bureau of Criminal Investigation successfully utilized process mapping to improve their DNA analysis process and deliver faster results which led to criminals being taken off the streets sooner and justice delivered swiftly. For more information regarding process mapping and how it can help you make improvements, visit lean.ohio.gov and click on the Resources tab.